I welcome you all for uh, module 9, lecture 2 on interferometry. In this uh, second lecture, we will uh, discuss about uh, the different uh, types of interferometers. We will uh, discuss the construction and working of uh, NPL flatness interferometer, Pitter NPL gauge interferometer, and also we will uh, study about uh, laser based interferometer and then we will see some commercially available gauge block interferometers. Now let us discuss on NPL flatness interferometer. We can see the schematic diagram of NPL flatness interferometer. We have base uh, plate on which uh, the workpiece to be inspected is uh, placed and there is a provision uh, for uh, keeping uh, the optical uh, flat and uh, at the other end we have a light uh, source so normally mercury vapor lamp is uh, used uh, with a lambda of uh, 0.5 uh, micrometer and uh, we can see there is a condensing uh, lens to condense the light to a point and the condensed light will pass through a green uh, filter so we get a green uh, monochromatic light source with wavelength of uh, 0.5 uh, micrometer and at the focal point uh, we have a pinhole through which uh, the light will uh, pass so here we get uh, an intense uh, uh, point uh, source of monochromatic uh, light the pinhole is uh, placed in the focal plane of uh, the collimating uh, lens so we have a collimating lens here and pinhole is placed at the focal point of this collimating uh, lens. So we get uh, a parallel beam of uh, monochromatic light which will fa fall on the workpiece uh, to be inspected. And then uh, the light will uh, pass through the optical flat, it will fall on uh, the workpiece and the light will get reflected and at this place we have a glass plate uh, reflector so light reflected light will get deflected and it will fall at the detector so through the eyepiece we can observe uh, the fringe uh, pattern now the entire uh, optical system is uh, enclosed in a metallic uh, cover you can see here the mercury vapor lamp and then uh, the entire optical system is enclosed in a metal uh, cover we can always high adjust the height of uh, this optical system to accommodate uh, the work pieces of different uh, heights and then uh, the optical flat is mounted on adjustable uh, tripod stand uh, and its angle can be adjusted uh, to get uh, the required uh, fringe uh, pattern. The base plate can be rotated so that the fringes can be oriented as per the requirement. So through the eyepiece we can observe the fringe pattern. Here we can see uh, a display unit is uh, interfaced with uh, the interferometer so that we can observe uh, the fringe pattern in the monitor. Now when uh, the surfaces of uh, the workpiece, say we have uh, a workpiece which is to be inspected like this, 
and uh, this top surface of the workpiece is uh, parallel to the bottom surface. That means these two working surfaces of the workpiece they are parallel. Uh, and uh, if this is the case, we can see here, we can observe the fringe pattern uh, like this. Now we can uh, observe that uh, these fringes are obtained by the base plate and uh, these fringes are obtained from the surface of uh, the workpiece. If uh, the two surfaces of the workpiece are parallel to each other and the surface and the surface of the base plate is parallel to these two surfaces then we obtain uh, equal number of fringes from uh, base plate as well as workpiece and the width of fringe will also be equal and uh, number of fringes will also be equal. If the workpiece uh, surface is not parallel, now we can uh, observe here that this uh, surface of the workpiece or the gauge is not parallel to this, then the number of fringes obtained will be different from number of fringes obtained from uh, base plate, which indicates that the two surfaces of the gauges, gauge uh, workpiece are not uh, parallel. When uh, thinner uh, slip gauges are used, which are thinner than 25 millimeter, then the interfering fringes formed are uh, interference fringes are formed both on the gauge surface and the base plate as we observed in the previous slide. As the gauge is uh, rung on the base plate, its underside is parallel with uh, its uh, base plate. That means uh, this is the base plate and this is the workpiece. The underside is parallel with the bit. That means the underside of the workpiece is parallel with uh, the surface of the base plate. This means that if the gauge faces are parallel, this surface and the bottom surface of the gauge, if they are parallel, the fringes on the base plate should be equal, equally spaced and parallel with the fringes on the gauge surface. Now if uh, the gauges or work pieces are thicker than 25 millimeter. Now you can observe here we have placed a, a gauge which is thicker than 25 millimeter. This is the rotary base plate on which we have placed a thicker gauge plate. Then the fringe pattern on the base plate is difficult to observe because of this large distance. But uh, the base plate is uh, rotary and its undersigned is uh, underside is lap truly with uh, uh, truly parallel with its working uh, surface. So if a non-parallel gauge is viewed, now you can see here this surface of the uh, gauge is not parallel with this, with uh, this uh, surface. If a, a non-parallel gauge is viewed, the angle it makes with the optical flat, so that is uh, this angle angle it makes with the optical flat will be as in case A. That means this is the angle that is uh, made. If the table is turned through 180 degrees, now we can observe here the table is completely turned through 180 degrees. The surface is now less parallel with the optical flat. That means uh, we have a greater uh, angle between uh, the gauge surface and the optical flat and a large number of fringes is observed. When the angle increases, we know that uh, the number of fringes will uh, increase. Now the error in parallelism, that means uh, uh, the error in parallelism between this surface and uh, this surface can be calculated using this relationship. 
n2 minus uh, n1 times lambda by 4 where n1 and n2 are number of fringes obtained in the first and uh, second position. By inserting n1 and n2 we can find what is the amount of error uh, in parallelism between the two surfaces of the work piece. Now let us uh, try to solve some numerical problems so that we can understand the basis uh, in a better manner. Now how do we check the parallelism error? Uh, the error in the parallelism of uh, the workpiece surfaces. A slip gauge is being inspected using an NPL interferometer. The gauge exhibits uh, 10 fringes along the width in one position. Now we know uh, the gauge is placed on a rotary base plate. In one position we observe 10 fringes and uh, it is rotated through 180 degree and we observe 16 uh, fringes in the second position. If the cadmium light source is used in the interferometer, determine the parallelism error over its uh, width. Now the wavelength of cadmium light source is uh, 0.5 micrometer. Number of fringes in the first position is uh, that is n is equal n1 is equal to 10. Number of fringes in the second position n2 is equal to 16. Now error in parallelism is obtained using this relationship n2 minus n1 times lambda by 4. So n2 minus n1 is 16 minus 10 that is uh, 6 and lambda is uh, 0.5 micrometer divided by 4 which gives 0.75 micrometer is the error. Uh, parallelism error between the two working surfaces of the gauge. That means we use the NPL interferometer to count how many fringes are there in the first position, how many fringes are there in the second position and by knowing the lambda value of the source we can find the error in parallelism. Now uh, let us see how we can uh, check the height of uh, slip gauges using uh, interferometers. Uh, the problem is like this and uh, an optical flat is used to check the height of uh, slip gauge against a standard uh, gauge of height uh, 20 millimeter. That means the given uh, slip gauge is compared with the height of standard uh, gauge of height 20 millimeter. Cadmium light is used in the NPL interferometer. If uh, the number of fringes on the gauge width of 15 millimeter is 12 and the distance between the two blocks is 13 millimeter, calculate the difference in height of the gauge being inspected. That means we have uh, a gauge of uh, 20 millimeter height and then another gauge is uh, placed on the base plate. So this is the base plate. So this height we have to check. The width of this uh, gauge is uh, 15 uh, millimeters. and uh, distance uh, between the two blocks is uh, 30 millimeter. That means this uh, distance is uh, 30 millimeter. Now uh, the difference in height h can be calculated using uh, this relationship n lambda by 2 times L by L, where N is uh, number of uh, fringes observed by the interferometer. In this case, uh, number of uh, fringes on the gauge width of 15 millimeter is 12. So, N is equal to 12. Distance between gauges, uh, that is L, is uh, 30 millimeter and L small l is width of uh, gauge inspected is 15 uh, millimeter. So n lambda by 2 times l upon l is n is 12 lambda is uh, 0.5 times 
times uh, capital N is 30, small L is 15 divided by 2. So, this gives uh, 6 micrometer. That means the difference in height of uh, the given gauge when compared with the standard uh, gauge of 20 millimeter height is 6 uh, micrometer. Now, uh, different uh, fringe uh, patterns we get uh, depending upon uh, the surface condition of the workpiece. Uh, you can observe here we have uh, different uh, fringe patterns A to F and uh, the corresponding uh, surface condition is also mentioned here. So, we get uh, the straight uh, parallel uh, fringes. Uh, when uh, the block, sur the surface of the workpiece or the gauge block is nearly flat along its uh, length, we get straight uh, fringes parallel to one edge. Now, uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, convex uh, fringes. So, this is case B. Fringes curve towards uh, the line of contact. So, here this is the line of contact and this is the line of contact. Fringes curve towards uh, the line of uh, contact showing that the surface is uh, convex and high in the center. The surface is high in the center like this. Now, the case C is surface is concave and low in the center. We can observe here this. We get uh, concave fringes and uh, the, they are low in the center. If this is the case, then surface is uh, concave. In case of uh, D, surface is flat at one end. So, here the surface is uh, flat and becomes increasingly convex at the other end. Now, we, here we are, we are observing convex fringes indicating that the surface is convex at the other end. And in case of uh, E, a surface is progressively lower towards the bottom uh, left hand uh, corner. And here we observe that there are two peak uh, points, case F. The two points of contact which are uh, higher compared to the other areas of the block. So, like this, depending upon the surface uh, condition, we get uh, different uh, fringe uh, patterns. Now, here we are observing the uh, a fringe uh, pattern. We have the work surface uh, whose uh, surface is convex and then we have placed an optical flap over the surface of uh, the work piece and when we observe, when, we, when this, uh, when this uh, pair is kept in uh, uh, the area where we, we have uh, the monochromatic light source, we can observe uh, circular uh, fringes uh, like this. Now, uh, so, this is the angle between uh, the surface of the workpiece and uh, the surface of uh, the optical uh, flat. As the angle between the surface and the optical flat increases, the number of the fringes become narrower. See, if this angle increases, we can observe here the fringes are narrower and they are closely packed. As the angle increases, the uh, fringes become very closer. Now, uh, how do we test whether uh, the uh, surface is convex or concave? So here is a method to show that uh, the surface is uh, convex. So, initially the contact when uh, the optical flat is uh, placed uh, like this, uh, there will be contact here and uh, they will get uh, the concentric uh, fringes as shown in the previous uh, slide. So, contact is here and we get the concentric fringes like this. Now, we have to apply slight pressure as shown here. Then, the contact point will move and now this is the fresh contact point. That means, the fringes will move, center of fringes will move towards left when the slight pressure is applied. So, this indicates that the surface is convex. Now, uh, let us uh, start discussion on uh, Pitter uh, NPL gauge uh, interferometer. 
I can see the schematic uh, diagram. We have uh, the base plate over which uh, the slip cage, which is to be inspected, is placed, and then the optical flat is placed like this. And uh, we have a monochromatic uh, light source. Normally, cadmium uh, lamp is used, so we get uh, the monochromatic light source. And uh, using this condenser less, the monochromatic light uh, source is uh, condensed at uh, this point uh, where uh, uh, an illuminating aperture is uh, placed. And from here, we get uh, the light source, monochromatic uh, light source. And yeah, by using this collimating lens, again uh, we uh, make uh, the light, uh, we obtain a parallel beam of uh, light which will fall on uh, the tilt table, a constant uh, deviating prism and then the light is uh, deflected and it falls on uh, the slip uh, gauge via the optical flap. And, uh, uh, the reflected light will follow this almost uh, same path and then uh, from here it deviates because of this slight inclination of the optical flat, uh, the reflected light will uh, slightly get deflected and it will fall on uh, the weaving uh, aperture and because of the presence of this uh, reflecting prism, the reflected light is deflected and it will uh, fall on uh, the detector and then we can observe uh, the fringes. Now, uh, this uh, type of uh, uh, interferometer is used uh, to measure the actual length of uh, the slip gauge and these uh, interferometers are, they are used in highly controlled uh, physical uh, conditions like uh, the temperature will be 20 degrees Celsius and the working pressure in the chamber where the workpiece is placed is of uh, 760 millimeter mercury and water vapor pressure will be 7 millimeter uh, containing 0.33% uh, by volume of uh, carbon uh, dioxide. Uh, light from the monochromatic source, normally cadmium lamp, is uh, condensed and focused onto the aperture and uh, this aperture provides a concentrated light source at the focal point of uh, a collimating uh, lens. So, we can see here this is the collimating lens and this is the focal point. So, we get uh, the condensed light at this uh, particular uh, point. The collimated uh, light falls on the constant deviating prism which uh, splits uh, the incident uh, light into light rays of different wavelengths and hence different uh, colors. And now, uh, the, we can always uh, select a desired uh, color by varying the angle of uh, reflecting the faces of the prism. So, we can uh, observe here this uh, constant deviating prism can be tilted to obtain uh, the monochromatic of uh, a desired uh, color. The light reflected from the optical flat and slip cage and base plate will travel back and fall on the weaving uh, aperture at this place is the weaving aperture where we obtain uh, the fringe pattern. Now how do we measure the height of uh, the slip gauge? So when uh, uh, the fringe pattern is uh, obtained, uh, if uh, uh, depending upon uh, the height of uh, the slip gauge, the fringe pattern is obtained uh, like this, this is the fringe pattern obtained by the surface of the gauge and this is the fringe pattern obtained by the base uh, plate. Now, we uh, can see height of the slip gauge is obtained by using this relationship n lambda by 2 plus uh, a times b times lambda by 2 where uh, b is the pitch of uh, the uh, fringe pattern obtained by the base plate and this a is uh, the gap between uh, the fringe on the base plate and fringe on the uh, fringe obtained from the gauge surface. So, here n is the uh, number of fringes uh, observed, lambda is the wavelength of the light source and a by b is the observed uh, fraction. So, there is provision to measure a and b and then we can calculate this fraction and then by inserting these values in the relationship, we can find 
the height of uh, slip uh, gauge. Now let us start uh, the discussion on uh, laser uh, interferometer. Nowadays uh, laser uh, is used in the interferometer. Uh, normally the gas lasers consisting of helium, neon uh, provide uh, perfect monochromatic uh, light and we can have an intensity thousand times uh, greater than uh, the other uh, light uh, sources so that we can uh, uh, observe the fringes uh, um, in a better fashion. The drawback of uh, laser interferometer is uh, its uh, uh, high initial uh, investment and other drawback is uh, since uh, the laser beam will have a small uh, diameter the spread of the laser on the work surface will be very small. In order to cover the larger area of the workpiece, we need to have uh, additional optical elements to spread uh, the beam to cover larger area of the workpiece. These uh, laser interferometers can be used to measure uh, small diameters and also uh, larger displacements uh, can be measured. So these uh, uh, laser interferometers are used uh, to measure the machine tool uh, slide uh, movement. Uh, we can uh, observe here, we have uh, the machine tool slide on which uh, the corner uh, cube, uh, the part of the laser interferometer is uh, fixed. So when the table uh, uh, moves, its movement is uh, recorded in the interferometer. Like this, the movement of uh, the machine tool slides uh, is uh, measured. Now coming to the construction of a laser interferometer, mainly it has a laser uh, head and then uh, the corner uh, cube and then uh, the electronic uh, uh, unit and the distal uh, counter. The corner cube is uh, the moving part of uh, the laser interferometer which is mounted on uh, the sliding member of the machine uh, tool. We can see here the light uh, ray which falls on the corner cube, it gets uh, deflected by 180 degree. Now coming to the laser head, it has the laser source, HE uh, laser source, uh, we get uh, the laser uh, light and then we have uh, the two photodiodes and then uh, two semi reflectors are housed in uh, the laser head and then we have uh, the amplifier to amplify the signal and then there is a counter to count uh, the number of uh, fringes and uh, the working uh, of this uh, laser interferometer is like this we get the laser light from the source which will uh, fall on uh, the semi reflector first semi reflector so light uh, ray falling on the first uh, semi reflector a part of it is uh, uh, deflected which moves in this direction again it is uh, deflected by the second uh, semi reflector and then finally it falls on uh, the first uh, photo view. part of the light falling here will be transmitted and it moves in this uh, direction it gets uh, deflected by 180 degree and then it falls on the semi reflector part of it is uh, def uh, uh, deflected and it falls on uh, the second photo diode and part of the uh, reflected uh, semi uh, reflected light will uh, uh, pass through the semi reflector and it gets combined here. Now, uh, uh, when the uh, corner uh, cube uh, moves along with the machine tool uh, slide, uh, we can observe here the first uh, light path is uh, P S and the second uh, light path is uh, P, Q, R, S. So again, uh, uh, depending upon uh, the uh, OPD, optical path uh, difference between these two rays, uh, if uh, it is equal to uh, odd number of half wavelength, we get uh, the dark band and if the OPD, optical path difference is uh, equal to even number of half wavelength, we get uh, bright uh, uh, band. So like this, depending upon uh, the uh, movement, we get the light band and uh, bright band. By counting uh, these bands, we can uh, uh, measure 
the machine tool uh, slide uh, movement. So normally these uh, laser interferometers are used to calibrate uh, axis movements of uh, CNC machine tools. Now this uh, diagram shows uh, the arrangement of a commercial uh, interferometer which uses uh, uh, la gas uh, laser HEME 633 Newton uh, nanometer stabilized laser and the, this, is, this is a dual uh, laser system. The other one is a HEME 543 nanometer stabilized uh, laser and uh, then we have uh, the unit uh, which houses the optical uh, elements. And in this uh, chamber, we have uh, the reference uh, flat uh, surface, the table surface on which uh, the gauge to be inspected is uh, placed. And then we have uh, a moving uh, mirror and a, a tilting uh, mirror, a mirror. We get the laser source and then uh, the light will uh, move in this uh, fashion. We get the collimated light which will fall on the uh, gauge surface and then it is uh, reflected back and then finally it falls on the CCD television uh, camera and on the monitor we observe uh, the fringes. Now it is very important that uh, this uh, chamber where uh, the gauge is placed uh, we should uh, uh, control uh, the working environment like pressure, temperature, humidity. So those things uh, we need to uh, control. And another uh, advantage of these uh, interferometers is uh, at a time you can load the 12 uh, gauge uh, blocks so that uh, the measurement uh, throughput is uh, more and uh, length of gauge block that can be accommodated in the uh, working uh, chamber is uh, 0.5 millimeter to 300 millimeter long uh, work, uh, gauges can be placed uh, here. Now this shows a photograph of uh, the gauge block, NPL gauge block uh, interferometer which uh, can house uh, gauge blocks up to 300 millimeter uh, uh, long uh, gauges and uh, uncertainty values uh, 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 in these uh, gauge block interferometer starts at 0 0.02 micrometer. So such a, a fine uh, accuracy can be achieved in these uh, gauge block interferometers. I can uh, see the chamber uh, where uh, we can keep uh, the gauge blocks to be inspected and in this chamber we need to control uh, the working environment and on the monitor we can observe uh, the fringes and we can make we process the signals received from uh, the interferometer. Now, uh, the features of uh, the dual uh, wavelength uh, um, measurement of the gauge block interferometer are uh, like this. Uh, a dual wavelength uh, laser source is used and uh, the pre-classification of sizes of the gauge blocks is possible with uh, such uh, an arrangement and uh, two frequency stabilized uh, laser light sources are used. Phase stepping optical system is used for high precision uh, length uh, measurement and detailed analysis of gauge block surface uh, geometry is possible and uh, large area interchangeable platens are provided in such a uh, uh, interferometer uh, so that uh, we can have optimum uh, throughput. So in one platen we can mount uh, the uh, gauges uh, to be inspected uh, while uh, the other platen will be inside the chamber wherein uh, uh, the measurement will be carried out. And once the measurement of uh, the uh, gauge blocks uh, placed on the platen which is inside is over, it is turned and uh, the outside platen will move in. Uh, so like this uh, we can have optimum uh, throughput. And uh, full and automatic uh, measurement is possible without the uh, intervention of uh, the operator. Once the gauge blocks are loaded in the chamber, all the gauge blocks are measured for uh, the uh, length aspect as well as for surface aspect and uh, 
uh, the result is uh, printed and then uh, the compensation for ambient condition if there is a change in the temperature or the pressure uh, automatic uh, compensation will be provided integrated and uh, rapid uh, gauge block flatness and length variation measurement is uh, possible so these uh, uh, two frequency uh, stabilized uh, laser uh, interferometers can be used uh, for analysis of the flatness of the gauge block surface as well as uh, the length variation can be measured and automatic calculation and printout of measurement uh, is possible in inch as well as uh, metric uh, units. Now uh, the other uh, features of uh, the laser interferometer are uh, listed here. Uh, flexible uh, image processing software for uh, measurement of uh, rectangular gauge blocks, square uh, gauge blocks and round uh, bars uh, is possible with such a comparators, compar uh, interferometers and after uh, appropriate uh, corrections have been applied, uh, typical measurement uncertainties of uh, 20 nanometer uh, for uh, 1 mm gauge and 40 nanometer for a 100 mm uh, gauge uh, can be achieved at 95 percent confidence uh, level and uh, calibration of internal optics uh, using uh, calibrated reference uh, uh, flats is uh, possible and it is also possible to have uh, automatic uh, background temperature uh, monitoring if there is any variation in the temperature and it can be compensated uh, automatically a 3d topography of uh, the whole surfaces uh, can be had a result uh, printout of entire set so if we keep some 10 or 12 pieces at a time the result printout of all the complete uh, uh, all the gauges is possible or you can have a result printer only for the selected uh, gauge uh, blocks. Automatic storing of results in the measurement file is possible so that uh, they can be retrieved at a later date for uh, uh, analysis uh, purpose. Now the temperature uh, measurement of the gauge blocks which are placed in uh, the uh, working chamber uh, and uh, the uh, it is possible using the calibrated platinum uh, resistance thermometers and a resistance uh, bridge and the temperature uh, adjustment or uh, control of temperature is possible using the software. Phase stepping uh, technique uh, is a very powerful technique for processing interference uh, patterns and such a system is used in the uh, instrument uh, to obtain uh, three dimensional uh, topographic measurements of the gauge block uh, surfaces and plate and surfaces with nanometer uh, resolution. The product uh, specifications are uh, uh, listed here. The measurement capacity of uh, the interferometers are uh, uh, gauge blocks uh, up to 300 uh, millimeter long uh, blocks can be loaded into the interferometer for measurement purpose. Uh, gauge blocks which can be inspected are uh, uh, like this rectangular, square and round gauges uh, uh, made of uh, steel, ceramic, tungsten carbide, chrome carbide uh, can be inspected with these uh, interferometers. Uh, length measurement uncertainty is uh, like this, uh, plus or minus 0.02 plus 0.2 times L uh, micrometers where, where L is uh, in uh, meters. Uh, such, a, uh, such an uncertainty uh, is possible when the interferometer is located within the specified uh, working uh, environment. And what are the features that can be measured uh, with these uh, interferometers? Gauge length can be measured, 
flatness of uh, the gauge block surface can be measured, length variation over the measuring phases uh, can be measured and uh, measurement results can be displayed in the metric units or inch uh, units and the software uh, like flap uh, for window validated by uh, NPL for precision computation. So flap uh, software uh, is used. Now here uh, we can see another uh, commercially available uh, interferometer made by JGO interferometer. Uh, we can see the um, uh, table, flap plate and so surface on which uh, the complete interferometer is placed. This is the the uh, unit which can be mounted on uh, the moving uh, element of the machine tools and this is uh, the uh, measuring uh, head which houses uh, the laser sources, optical elements etc. And then we can have a monitor uh, which will show the uh, shape of interference and then uh, the three dimensional uh, topography of uh, the surfaces uh, etc. The details of uh, such a uh, interferometer uh, can be obtained by jgo.com. Let us conclude uh, the uh, lecture uh, number two. In this uh, lecture, we discussed uh, uh, some of the interferometers uh, like uh, NPL uh, flatness interferometer, Pitter uh, NPL gauge interferometer, and then uh, interferometer based on uh, laser uh, monochromatic uh, light sources and some commercially available commercial gauge block interferometers are also discussed. We discussed about uh, the constructional features and then uh, how they can be used for measurement of uh, uh, various uh, features like uh, the gauge block uh, surface parameters, uh, length parameters etc and uh, what are the various applications of these uh, interferometers that also we discussed. Uh, with this uh, we will uh, conclude the module number 9 on interferometry. Thank you. Yeah.